Hello, everybody, and welcome to this year's uh, Studio Lin Hybrid Studio Tour as part of uh, a smaller cluster of the Angewandtes End of the Year Festival Show. Uh, I'm here together with my colleagues uh, Maya Oswaldich, Kaiho Yu, uh, Astrid Trinkbauer, our coordinator, and Martin Morero. We teach together with Professor Greg Lin who is an LA-based architect and uh, academic. Um, I'll just give maybe a short heads up of what awaits us, what might be a 45 minute to one hour tour. Uh, in the first part of the tour, uh, we will be guiding you through a virtual Mozilla hub space, uh, showcasing a few selected Studio Linz projects. And we will do this on Zoom by sharing our screen and walking through this space, which has been kindly uh, curated and um, um, crafted by students and uh, assistants of Studio Hani Rashid. And then in the second part of the tour, we will show a physical exhibition uh, and students will be presenting their work on screens and on little physical models and give some insights and answer some questions. Uh, about the work that we in studio have been doing for the past um, two years. Um, maybe also uh, for anybody who is new to uh, Studio Lin, we are one of three architecture studios at the Angevante next to Hani Rashid and Diaz Moreno Garcia Grinda. Uh, we look at contemporary culture and technology and are engaging students to think about architectural innovations, think about new spatial typologies and new spatial experiences. And we for sure advocate and educate designers and thought leaders. Uh, Studio Lin heavily uses uh, innovative and new digital mediums, as we will see today in some of the work, but we also rely very much on physical output and physical models in combination next to the digital. Um, so everybody can see we're at the start of this uh, virtual world uh, and we will walk through the first room where I will give a short explanation about the objectives of uh, the projects that are to be followed. So if you walk through this world, maybe later on your own, you can read through this as part of the tour. Um, I'll give this little introduction. This semester, the last two semesters, so the winter semester and the summer semester has been a larger umbrella topic of uh, rethinking building hygiene and flows uh, students have been inventing new spatial uh, typologies in a constructive dialogue with contemporary real world challenges. Uh, as everybody knows, uh, we've all been affected by the global pandemic. And the larger question was, what is architects, uh, what is an architectural response to, to these uh, kind of hazards? And the studio has been looking into two objectives. One is which is flow of people and circulation. And the other one is flow of uh, air and the increase of air intake and fresh air in, into the building design. We have been looking into new design mediums, uh, basically the simulation of people with agent-based behavior. That's a particular uh, workflow and work method within, uh, within Unity that Kaiho has been uh, heavily teaching. And we gave several workshops where students learn the skills uh, to simulate different agent behaviors to the hundreds of agents inside a building and see how these agents uh, distribute, uh, conglomerate and what kind of densities emerge out of these uh, simulations. And we were able to do the same with airflow. So there's not a huge uh, 
difference. Um, we were looking at the inter interdependencies between agents slash humans and airflow. And we use this kind of technique as a conceptual ground to think about healthier buildings for our future. Uh, I will walk now to the first room and show a project that also will be later explained by the students uh, upstairs, but not with uh, uh, videos and images, but on a physical model. So what you can, I'll try to go back. So what you can see in the front of us is a section uh, through the project. And you can see that there are different elongated spaces connecting from facade to facade, uh, which on the one hand help circulation of people emerging from floor to floor instead of getting into elevator cabins or shafts or cores, but also, hello, but also on the other side, uh, help to bring in fresh air in larger quantities into the building to help ventilate these uh, circulation spaces. We will look at the video now for a short time. Here we see a walk through to through these spaces for air and for people at the same time with various vantage points and lookout points into the city. It's a mid-rise building, I would say a little tower. Um, the only means of vertical transportation mechanically is by a kind of Pata Nostra system, which is uh, located on these glass tubes on the perimeter. And then everything else in the building in the inside is orchestrated and organized by these elongated uh, um, spaces. So we see here also maybe at the lower two drawings in the plan, um, these kind of these kind of really interesting long spaces that cut through different portions of the building, always from facade to facade, helping people to get to find their way, and also helping air to enter the building in larger amounts. I don't want to stand in the middle of the space, as the space also has audio and it somehow inter inter with uh, my little speech here. Okay, we will hear a little bit more about this project also upstairs, but this, uh, I mean, for everybody who is maybe also not an architect, this is what maybe an end of the year presentation looks like from students. They work in various mediums from digital simulations and animations to really well-crafted uh, drawings, architectural sections, illustrations, to on one hand explain the organization of the project, on the other hand, to give us a little bit of an insight about the ambience and the spatial qualities. Maybe as a last thing, I think there is always an option to enter 3D models, right, Ben? Say if you yes, kind of yes, pan yes. over, which I would strongly encourage because this project is actually designed as a one-way circulation system. So uh, maybe uh, the visitors even manage to get through the through the through that sequence through the project yes. on your. We on can your, we can also do it now. If uh, should we do it now as well? Okay. Okay, so this is the building. I will maybe fly around the building for the first time so that you guys get a glimpse of its uh, exterior. And then I will try to fly through one of these elongated spaces. So you see how that space cuts through the building like a large uh, shaft from, 
from uh, facade to facade. And as the building is organized uh, vertically, we have a few of these uh, cut through spaces with different color codes. You see here other two, and they always connect uh, vertically um, different levels. So as I said before, uh, a kind of organizational element for air intake, but also uh, for circulation of people. And as I told you, it's, in, it's interesting in this project how circulation and airflow have been matched in the spaces so that those spaces would show a higher number of people um, also gets a lot of fresh air in order to think about building hygiene and safety measures. Okay, this always happens. I need to enter uh, the project again. I will run to the second space and then hand over to Kaiho, who will give an introduction to a diploma project. Yeah, so while we are walking um, towards the second room, I wanna kind of elaborate a little bit on about um, what is the diploma project. So the study at the Angavante with us is for three years, and um, which means six semesters. In the first four semesters, the students will work in the vertical studio setup, which means um, the students will also have the opportunity to work with their uh, colleagues in different um, semesters. Um, so on one hand, it kind of helps with the collaboration attitude um, and a very good studio culture. And on the other hand, it also helped the students to learn from each other on both design as well as technique. So on the fifth semester, um, the students will start to work independently, which we call a pre-diploma semester. So in this semester, the students will also um, design based on the studio brief, but have the opportunity to somehow develop their own agenda. Um, which goes in parallel with their diploma proposal. Um, in the meanwhile, um, in the fifth semester, which is a pre-diploma semester, students will also have the opportunity to consult with uh, theory department, structure department, energy, and other like, for example, AFA for further interest in other kind of territories. So things will be integrated with the design project they present in for their diploma. So this project, what you are looking at here is, um, is done by Georg Pop um, in his last semester, in his diploma semester, where he worked um, in independently on the project. Um, this project is titled Motion Motives. Um, what he is proposing, as you can see in here um, from the animation, is a new prototypical building typology with the integrated uh, motion capture and 3D scanning technology used for fabrication, fitting, and testing of um, customized bodywear and prosthetics on the site in the building itself and for special demand. So when he, when uh, Georg was developing the project, um, he was working on um, the idea of how things can be customized based on um, tracking as well as fabrication, but also to integrate the idea of, um, of pedestrian simulation, how people move in the space, like Benson introduced earlier with the overall um, studio brief. And um, the project is, is trying to think about how um, we can learn from the pedestrian movement on the plaza where he did a lot of um, image recognition based on pedestrian footages and use the architecture to respond those agendas and think about how these ideas, how the movement of the pedestrian can be storaged or can be adapted into a user oriented hub, which um, allow both experimenting with the, with the product, um, testing with the product, um, run in the building, how the speed and space can work together for a certain purpose. So in here, what you are looking at is an elevational view of the building um, where the building is separated into um, 
three different levels and then interconnected by circulation space and uh, tracks. So the, as, as the motion capture idea is uh, highly integrated in here, the project is really looking at how um, the customers, which are the users for the building, are moving and how their speeds are changing while they are testing with different things. Um, if we, yeah, if we go to the right side, we can see with um, along with the with the architectural drawings and um, simulation, the students are also using um, renderings to represent their idea um, for the project. Which, um, which in this rendering, you see how the building is engaging with the public environment as well as the overall atmosphere around the building. I think for I, this pro project, we also have a model uh, yes. where you can, you can walk through. So within this model, you can see how the circulation is functioning as a way to guide people um, across the space and how the form is being adapted to different um, pedestrian walking habits or kind of flow patterns. So at the end, this project is trying to, to investigate how those informations can be used for design and inform and adjust the performance in the building, as well as how the body were and um, which, which is a product and the customer and the space and the outdoor environment can work together as um, for this kind of human architecture um, interaction. Okay, and now uh, I think we'll go to the third space and Martin, uh, our coming uh, diploma student, will share a few insights of his project uh, on his own. I need to load this page again, so give me a brief moment till I walk into the third space. And obviously all of you can, walk, can uh, walk these rooms virtually on your browsers uh, anytime. Um, of course, you can also look at the other two studios and other departments and some research projects. As part of this tour, we only look today at uh, some of these studio LIN projects, but it's really worth exploring the sonic blur world um, also on your own and cruise a little bit through the 3D models. Um, Martin? Yes. Okay, great. So <clears throat> tell me what I should be, I think this is a good overview. Yes, uh, hello everyone. Uh, maybe you can go to the uh, video clips first. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, this, uh, in fact, this is a, a AR model overlay with the physical models. So yeah, this uh, this is the tower, of course, and this is a project to challenge the conventional vertical transportation approach for tower design, because uh, vertical transportation has been treated as uh, efficiency oriented means of transportation, and always over monotonous social environments. So. In my project, I try to considering the vertical transportation and introducing intermediate point of interest uh, through reconfiguring the programs 
So the social environment in the tower become multi-vertical transportation driven. These over variations in volume of people flow, choices of transportation, and also improving internal air ventilations with uh, transportation other than conventional lift spine. So yeah, you can uh, maybe you can uh, turn to this section. Section yeah. yeah. So so the section is basically show how two kinds of uh, vertical transportation. Uh, merge together and work together. And in fact, both uh, uh, escalator-driven and lift-driven cluster could work independently and, or cooperatively, depends on the needs of social distancing. And also the intermediate points, yep, and also is where the fresh air comes in, so you turn to the perspective. So, yeah, so you can see this, this is the entrance of the, of the tower and the facade uh, start wrapping up from the lower part. This is the stroking streets. And then you can see the solids and the open the uh, facade to kind of uh, create different lighting environments uh, according to program these like exhibitions, libraries, and uh, like uh, terraces. Okay, thank you very much, Martin. Thanks. Um, we are finished uh, with the Sonic Blur Studio Lin World, and we will hand over now to Maya Oswaldich, who is upstairs in the physical exhibition part with some of our students. Uh, they will showcase a few projects. And what we would like to do at the very end is to open up um, for questions, if any of you have specific questions to the work or to studying in Vienna or Studio Lin in particular. So Maya, we give yes. over to you now. I'll stop sharing down here. Yes. So we have a little bit of, uh, of uh, technical difficulty. Yes, you can see on Studio Lin is already sharing. I would kindly like to ask everybody to switch on Zoom into the speakers view and then hopefully this screen is going to appear larger where the action is going on. And I will be joining everybody in a few seconds. So everyone, please pin the Studio Lean uh, profile. <laughs> so this will be in the speaker Let us know if the sound okay. Thumbs up, perfect, awesome. So I would like to introduce Belina Yancheva first. She's our recent uh, alumni who just graduated last week. And um, Belina will briefly talk about uh, her diploma project. So Belina, what is it and how did the project come about? Um, so it started from my general interest in us and releasing the topology of the performance center. Um, however, from a slightly different angle and not uh, so much focus of an infrastructure for hosting a professional performance only and inviting audience in distance, but rather um, extending to a wider audience um, and thinking of it more as a melting pot of um, different levels of uh, performance, both professional and amateur. Um, welcoming visitors um, as well into a into a public space where um, a lot of possibilities open up. Yes, you also had a very strong interest during your studies in views. Uh, so I was, you know, in designing architecture around of uh, very interesting and diverse notions of view. So I was wondering if that also went into your pro in, into your diploma project, and if. And if it did, if you could point to some of those moments. Yes, that was that was actually a perfect fit as um, I wanted to establish different connections between uh, performances and audience. So for example, um, in, in these situations, I have um, the, the inner facades interfacing to the theaters where the more professional performance happens um, and opening up to the um, more informal, um, in your space, which wraps around those theaters. So yeah, let's keep on flying through. 
and for me these moments were were of interest to explore where um there's these connections between the spaces um visually And of course, opening to the exterior was also an intention as I saw the performance center as um, as reaching out to the city and to the surroundings and engaging visitors and pass like passers-by, um, drawing them in. I think these drawings also probably show well your street-like approach, right? Where you really spent time on... Uh, you know, I'm thinking about these informal streets that run through your project. So the project is uh, located in Helsinki and that was uh, an intentional de decision on my part as I wanted to tackle um, this opening up of the performance center in a harsh uh, climate that is there. Um, so what I was really focusing on was bringing um, this life into an interior public space, which are these um, street-like uh, spaces uh, populated by both by informal performances, but also by cafes or really open to, to and the celebrations. Thank you Thank so you. much for being with us. Thank you. So I'm going to take over the, 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 sorry, the, the screen. I just want to make a transition to the studio work. And I think that the next diploma project by Margarita Volkova really offers itself for that because it's really, uh, it was really trying to explore how to bring together physical and virtual spaces, working uh, on a hybrid architecture, which at the end resulted, and go here, uh, which at the end resulted in, uh, in um, museum space, which is physical, but it's built in a way that it negotiates the tension between hyper-specific and generic in order to be able to hold uh, augmented uh, content. So maybe we can look at the little bit of a, of a video, how Margot envisioned that space to be dynamized, if we want to call it that way, through digital content with the idea that we do not walk through space solely with our own eyes, but nowadays also with uh, phones, tablets, and maybe even uh, soon with, uh, with some kind of devices or especially devices that can be used in an exhibition setup to augment uh, physical information and, uh, sorry, to augment physical artifacts with additional physical information. So with this being said, uh, I think that's a great transition to what you can see in our physical space where the idea was to really showcase methods and mediums. So we are gonna move over to Jana. I wanna introduce Jana and Jana worked together with Ebra who is unfortunately behind the screen. Uh, on, the, on, on this project and it was the summer semester project in which we brought augmented models back into the studio. So students were really trying to figure out how to, or learning and trying to figure out how to put the dynamic content onto models. So Jana, I would kindly like to ask if you could give us a brief think into your work. Hello, um, our semester was about um, or was to build a, a mixed use building in Milan. And the idea was not to, um, to design in a conventional way, but rather use um, agent based simulation tools to design. And so we worked a lot with different durations, time spent in specific areas and uh, obstacles. And as you hear before, our Studio really likes to combine physical models or physical res representation tools with, with digital tools. So we started really early this semester with organization reality. And I will quickly show you our output. Maybe you can see. <coughs> I hope it works. Yes. 
So for our model um, or for our uh, project, it was really uh, the circulation in the middle of the building was really important. And that's why we built the middle part of the building because then it's um, it's also on one hand side, it's, oh, sorry. It's um, possible with the augmentation reality to show the whole building, but also to hide some stuff and to really focus on the really focus on the circulation in the middle. And as I, as I explained before, we worked with three different user groups. So we have, as you can see here in the three different colors, we worked with the different user groups and we tried to divide their paths, but still keep them together in some designed um, connection areas or intersection areas in a way. So here with the augmentation, you can really go into the building and see the, the details and the paths. And we also have the possibility to hide some paths to focus on, on specific user groups and to see their different ways to travel. So I think it was a really fruitful and productive semester. And we really learned a lot of different stuff and new tools to augment. Yeah. Thank you very much, Jana and Eva. Maybe we swing over. We want to show you another project uh, of the same semester, which would be presented by Tobias oh. and um, Jonas. So the framework of the project is, uh, is very similar. What you can also see is that these models are not the traditional representational models, architectural models this one is used to. They're more like almost like models model ruins, so very partial, uh, because only certain parts need, need to be built and only parts need to be built in a, in a certain way so that they can be augmented. And at this point, I'm happy to hand over. Hello, um, so um, here you see that we can use um, the AR to, um, to show all different kinds of information, um, what a uh, purely physical model cannot do. Like we can show how um, users move uh, through the building and all the show um, the different um, duration zones and also show uh, different layers of, of the whole structure, like can blend in the slabs to show um, the furniture, like um, here the slide or, or this uh, T-Rex in the exhibition space. And um, yeah, so our, our strategy to um, deal with the challenges of um, the uh, corona pan pandemic was um, to reduce the mixture of user groups. And we wanted to do this by um, uh, separating the flows of people and also reducing um, the, uh, the intermixing of different user groups. So um, we, we have three different volumes. Um, that host um, the uh, um, high duration functions, for example, um, that's a museum, um, a library, and a workplace. And these are separated to, to keep the flow of movement between them um, parallel. And also, um, each of these uh, volumes has uh, um, a hotel on top of it. It's also separated to not um, let some. Uh, to, to reduce the uh, uh, intersection points between uh, the user groups. And then we have a loop connecting um, these main functions. And the loop basically hosts all, all the low duration functions uh, of the building. And um, yeah, these are like amenities, like for example, a gym or uh, a playground, a shop and a bar. And because, um, uh, these amenities, um, most users will kind of, um, most users will, will use it. And that's why we wanted to um, have the best possible air exchange rate uh, for this, uh, these spaces. And that's why um, our loop basically is a void. It's an open space. You can see it here. And the wind goes, uh, goes through these openings. And then we have uh, chimneys where the, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's then out again. 
Okay. Um, I will now hand over to Tobias. So we were using also um, different ways of color coding and additional architectural information to explain parts of our concept on the model. So here we can see three different cores for specific behavior patterns. Um, we also explain how the architectural concept is working, how the loop is constructed from two loops and has an intersection, which can be used as a shortcut in the middle, that we can see here. <laughs> and um, yeah. So the concept was also to work a lot with the duration. So also the zone of low duration of our project is partitioned into four durational zones. So this is rising from the entrance to the top to from low duration to high duration to match the required travel time to the expected duration of the program. So the loop you can see here is not only there for circulation, it is also housing program and the visitors and users are walking through program and feel out like through the building and the program is um, also placed according to the durational concept uh, of the four zones. So if we go closer to the model, we can see, for example, a zone of medium duration here where we see a playground, more this in a horizontal way. So if we move to the zone of the highest duration of the uh, loop, we can see here the wellness area with a little pool augmented. So this is how an example how we could use um, augmentation for additional architectural information. Yeah, here we see a bar and um, this is the gym. So, yeah, so this is, um, I would say our part. I would give back to Maya. Thank you. So first of all, thanks to Martin, thank you to Tobias, thank you to Jonas, thank you to Jana, obviously Delina as well, for doing this tour with us. As mentioned, the exhibition is open until Friday. Uh, please uh, comply to the three G rules. Come and visit on the second floor our methods and mediums exhibition. I think it gives a little bit of a glimpse of the uh, mediums and methods that we are developing at, uh, at Studio Linz. So welcome to join and also to see all of the diploma projects which we were uh, producing during the last year. So at this point, I'm happy to open up the uh, Q&A and to hand over uh, to my colleagues. Sorry, I also, of course, wanna emphasize if you are around Vienna today at 2 p.m., uh, the students of the Institute of Architecture are launching their publication. It's the first one accompanied with music and drinks. So a nice hangout, please come by. And, uh, and check it out. So the Q&A session is open. In the meantime, while we can talk a little bit, Ebra is also gonna go to the first floor and just walk through the Sonic Blur, which is the physical exhibition of the digital Sonic Blur that you can browse through online. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maya. So as we've said, uh, we have a little bit time left. And we would like to give this opportunity to any of you participants to uh, shoot any of your questions uh, in relation to Studio Lin. So don't be shy. Does anybody have questions to what we've seen or studying in Vienna or any other related question? All good. Uh, I would say if nobody has any questions, we will just uh, um, see maybe Abra's presentation of that installation, and then uh, we can close the session. But still, if anybody of you has questions, just let us know. We're very happy to, to answer them. 
So what we see downstairs is on the first floor, that's the physical part of that immersive uh, sonic blur exhibition. There is a virtual reality headset where you can dive into the world with a virtual uh, headset. It's a quite of a nice experience. We see, I think, Abra right now trying it out. Yana. It always, yeah. Yana, sorry. It always looks uh, a little bit funny. And then in the back, there is this little immersive projection space uh, that tries to emulate um, that kind of threshold space where we've been uh, touring through. And of course, we also see on screen some of the physical projects. It's a really nice, small, uh, um, immersive um, exhibition setup. And as, as Maya pointed out, if you're in Vienna, the exhibi exhibition is still open till today and tomorrow. And in various other parts of the building, you can see really great work from various um, uh, departments in all kinds of mediums and forms of expressions. And um, it's a really great place to visit and on these current days. Where do you see the resistance of architecture in the emergence of artificial intelligence? Well, um, that's a very, very broad question uh, by Ozan Bazaran. He has been, he has been uh, uh, putting this into the chat. Um, Ozan, to answer your questions, I think this would be a very long uh, discussion in a separate session. But 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 from your question, I would I would point out that I'm not sure if architecture uh, needs to resist uh, um, artificial intelligence. In fact, I think uh, many architecture schools and uh, teaching agendas and research projects embrace artificial intelligence because it's a very new um, uh, emerging uh, and, and up for grabs uh, uh, technology. And I think there's a lot of speculation where this uh, technology can be used in architecture meaningfully. I don't, I think um, there would be a myriad of answers where, where this could be thought of but I also would not be daring to pinpoint down my finger and saying this is where artificial intelligence will uh, definitely help architects. I think it's something that's under current investigation as part of a lot of research projects. We've also had a, a really successful workshop where we equipped our agents with uh, AI capabilities to navigate spaces. Um, but I think only the immediate future will point out where this will be applied successfully. Yes, maybe to elaborate on that a little bit, I would say that um, at the Institute of Architecture, for example, architecture, uh, sorry, artificial intelligence is embedded into some seminars which explore it from the structural engineering point of view which is also uh, attached to some research that has been and is ongoing at the Institute. I would say the way that we work with uh, agents, it's not real artificial intelligence. So certain problems which these methods uh, or, or let's say image-based uh, methods um, provoke are not, um, that crucial, but this being said is, uh, yes, I, on my part, I do think that it is a new tool. It's interesting, but it is also something to approach very critically. I hope this gives you a little bit of, of, of something, but as Benson said, yeah. that's a big discussion. You're, you're welcome. Any, any more questions? You don't need to be shy. Anything that's on your mind uh, related to architecture and studying and technology and Studio Lin, we, we will be happy to answer. I think we have uh, a few more minutes time. So also you can post your questions in the chat. If you don't wanna speak up, all good. We would be happy to answer them.
Okay. I would say it's 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 usual. We're we're quite a we're sometimes used to a uh, uh, few questions. All good. Yes, very good. Kaiho pointed out our website. You can definitely explore the past few years there with a thorough project documentation and also some outlines of the studio, what we're investigating. But I would say if um, no more questions uh, uh, are there from the audience side, uh, thank you very much, everybody, for joining our tour and participating. And um, thank you, Maya, Kaiho, Astrid, Martin, and everybody else um, for and being with the, us. Yeah. And, and all for the all students, the students, yes. Maybe, maybe at this point, this is, it's also just to be nice and mention that we also especially want to thank all of our student assistants in the studio that assist us in maintaining this exciting working uh, environment, uh, in contributing with special skill sets that they have, but also in helping to, you know, keep the studio culture, which is so unique to the to the Angevante. So thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. It was a great year. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye. Bye.